Welcome back into my studio kitchen. Uh, my show is going to be a little bit different. No vino, no recipes. Just going to be chatting about a very important issue for the citizens of Noah Bay, the new sewer plant. Uh, Mayor Irons reflected in his uh, update this morning that serious uh, decisions are on the horizon and you have a voice in the process. I am a member of the grassroots organization, Citizens for Affordable Living, and my guest today is Barry Brown. And we're going to be discussing just the facts. So I'm going to start with a little bit of background on how we got here. Moro Bay and Cayucas had an aging sewer plant in jeopardy of being fined for water quality violations. The plan to rebuild that plant in the same location without water reclamation was denied by the Coastal Commission. The Moro Bay City Council, led by Jimmy Irons, told the Commission that a plant could be located east of Highway 1 for only about 15 million more, or approximately 50 million total. So uh, let me repeat that. The commission was told it would be 50 million for a new safety of the plant. Unfortunately, the same council was unable to reach agreement with Kalikas and ultimately Kalikas opted to build their own facility and their projected uh, costs between 25 and 30 million. While numerous alternatives have been considered, the city council rejected and ignored the primary findings by the Fair Review Panel and recommended the current plan be priced at 150 to 167 million, which would almost triple our cost. We have heard this week the estimate has been reduced to about 130 million. In fact, I was there uh, the meeting on Friday and I'm looking at a 69 foot plant, but that does not include the little station and other bits and pieces. So we are proposing a suggestion smaller price tag, which will meet the regulations of the Regional Water Quality Board and the support Coastal Commission rules. But first, we need to immediately start repairing our leaky sewer lines, which place the estuary in catastrophic environmental jeopardy and danger and greatly skewed the design size of the new facility. Our prior primary violations occur on uh, maximum six times per year due to heavy rains. This all caused from unmaintained and unrepaired sewage line leaks. We also need to address the BOD issues for water quality with plant modifications. After we repair the lines and the Cayucas leaves, we need to accurately engineer the line and plant size. We don't want to end up like Los Angeles and have a plant oversized and overbuilt by a factor of two, and as a consequence, not running efficiently and leaving the estuary extremely vulnerable to all sewage spills. By repairing current plant for approximately 20 million, we would avoid requiring a coastal commission permit. As to the treated water, we could pipe into the Mono Valley east of Rancho Colina and allow it to percolate in the aquifer. Thus, we're proposing environmentally friendly and so Barry, why are you opposed to the city plan? There, there are many reasons that, uh, that I oppose the plan. Uh, primarily, nothing about the plan makes any sense. Uh, the plant size is, is about twice what it should be, and we're going to uh, proposing to pump raw sewage up the hill all the way up Quintana Road through a 15-inch steel line under pressure all the way over to South Bay Boulevard. And the construction of this line up the Quintana Road will we will interrupt all business along Quintana for quite some time, destroying businesses and tourism. And even with the bids coming a little lower, these, uh, these new prices are, are just way too expensive for us. And what are the water quality violations and how do we correct our deficiencies? Well, the, I met with the uh, water quality people last week and the conditions that they're upset about are the, we don't achieve full secondary treatment. And there's also another item called BOD, which is a biochemical oxygen demand in the water. We experience secondary treatment violations during high rains. And this is primarily because of the leaking pipes. With the loss of Cayucas flow and repairing the major line leaks, we solved the first issue because our plant would then be more capable to handle the problems. We also need to have an additional treatment for this BOD, which is the new federal regulation that's the amount. Allowable. And what is BOD stand for? It's it's called biochemical oxygen demand. Chemistry wasn't my forte. I'm a mechanical guy. <laughs> so, um, how do you receive uh, approval from the Coastal Commission, who denied our permit in 2013 and recently sent us a letter indicating we cannot build west of Highway One? Well, the issue is the Coastal Commission doesn't give a permit. What the Coastal Commission does is it looks at the permit that the city issues, and the just like everything, it takes education. 
I reached out to the water quality, regional water quality people, and they were very supportive when we explained to them what our goals were. It's uh, repairing the plant that we have, and so we would have to have a small permit to do that repair, but it's uh, no more repairing your house. And they, the Coastal Commission has a economic viability is their major concern, and that economic viability of moving the plant uh, just violates the new uh, Coastal Commission uh, guidelines. So, okay. basically, from what I attended several meetings, and I was at the meeting that I did on the 25th, where they stood up and they basically said that, uh, you know, you, um, we, we, we needed to, we could not build there. So I'm a little bit confused on certain things. And, you know, I, um, if, and then Mayor Irons was talking about the new um, COP 218 proposal that's coming out. The citizens have a voice on that. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, the way the 218 works, uh, it's, it's the right to vote on taxes law. And so what happens if the city puts out a, a, our new rate schedule, they send a notice to everyone. And so if people accept it and, and do nothing, then that's an automatic yes. But if they look at the new uh, rate schedule, the city's gonna provide a, a protest ballot that, that will be in their notice. And if, if uh, people, property owners and users, sign the protest now, then it allows, it requires that the city can't go forward with the existing plan, they have to reevaluate. Okay, folks, I'm listening 973 and 1079 Vermont. The listeners support the community of the Central Coast, and I'm your host, Carol Truesdale, for my broadcast on Let's Talk Food and Wine. So, we're not talking about food and wine, we're not talking about recipes, we're talking about something that's percolating in our city right now, which is really, really important. This program is under so, um, if the protest vote is successful in being rejected and rate increases, wouldn't we be on the same path as Los Osos? There seems to be a lot of rhetoric going on about that. Los Osos uh, had, a, had no plan at all. They had no collection system, no pipelines. And they started out uh, without a complete plan. That was one of their issues. Uh, and they started to build a plant right downtown next to the community center. But when the citizens found out what was going on, there was such a, a furious debate that they stopped the project and there were lawsuits and all kinds of things. And the fact that the citizens were not were not aware of what was going on. That's what Cal's trying to do, is to have people be aware so when this notice comes out from the city that your rates are going to increase dramatically, then that's what Cal's providing. We just want to provide education. We want to know there is an option. And firstly, we'd just like to have someone sit down and talk to the Coastal Commission on a one-on-one -on -one basis rather than say, gee, you don't want us to do this, do you? And it's not been that right way to approach it. Well, another thing, too, with Los Angeles is a lot of people don't realize that they were in septic systems and they were stating that the septic system was leaching into the groundwater and into the bay, and that each person has a lien on their property for $25,000 if they didn't pay the initial twenty-five grand up front. Uh, and so, you know, that's like 20 years, and the rates have gone up. So, um, luckily for Morro Bay, we do have a sewer system in place. We have lines that need to be fixed. Um, so uh, a lot of things have been talked about, sea level rise and potential tsunamis. What is your, what do you feel about that? Well, the answer that, that you have to address each one of those as they come. And so sea level rise is, is uh, slowly occurring. Uh, and of course, this existing moral plant is, is in a flood zone as it comes right down there. So if you repair the plant, you can armor it a little bit. But the ultimate solution would not be to uh, spend excessive amount of money on that existing plan. What you need to do is to say, okay, let's stop what we're doing now, find out how what the real flows are going to be. And when you're talking about flows, you're talking about what goes through the volume the, goes through, through each of the existing uh, pipes that are leaching right now into the aquifer and groundwater, correct? And, they, it, and what happens is, is they get so it, these light pipes are cracked and leaking. So in wintertime, flow in the plant goes up by 50%, so we'll go from about 900,000 gallons a day to almost a million and a half gallons a day. So you've got to stop those leaks. We have to repair the pipes, find out what the true flow is, Cayucas will go away, so their volume will be gone, and we'll get down and find out what the accurate volume is, and design a plant, a small plant, that will fit on the high ground of the existing property. There's an area that the existing property that's above the 
100 year flood zone established in the, in the FEMA flood maps and you can build a plant on that property uh, at, a, at the cost. Right now we have a bid for 67 million to build out in South Bay. But for 67 million you can build on that existing high ground and you don't have to spend another 100 million to pipe everything out there and pipe everything back. One of the things that uh, really concerns me is that um, I'm not an engineer and the pounds per square inch that flows through the pipe, so you have brand new pipes. Isn't that going to cause some sort of uh, reaction to the existing plant, like more of, you know, positive flows coming in and pressure, or is that just uh, a normal uh, part of, of how everything flows? Well, the, the whole system more obey, and that's the beauty of it, it's uh, it's all gravity. It flows to uh, three different collection points. There's one in the cloisters, the cliff station there. There's one on South Bay Boulevard with a collection point. And there's another down in Barca Perro. So they pump it up and it all runs gra by gravity into the plant. And when it gets there, it, it has no pressure. Um, and so it's easy to handle. So the new proposal they're talking about is to build a lift station and then put it under pressure all the way up Quintana, up to South Bay Boulevard. In my opinion, it's like a loaded gun. You're going to have a 15-inch steel pipe aimed at South Bay Boulevard. If that pipe leaks it anywhere, it's going to go right into the Choro Valley and it'll go right down into the into the estuary. And once you get a big spill into the estuary, it's tragic. Well, uh, something that, that I'm not an engineer, but if you're having a lift station in the existing area where our current um, sewer plant is, and if the lift station goes down, the whole system goes down. So wouldn't it make sense to to build the system close by to where the existing lift station is, so you have better control over that? Well, the fact that you have to build a huge lift station to pump, you got to pump everything out to South Bay, uh, that's going to be very vulnerable. You talk about sea level rise and tsunami, it's basically going to be right there. So if that one lift station fails, then everything fails. But if you put a plant on the high ground, out of way of the sea level rise and the flooding, then you don't have the vulnerability of a, of a lift station failing and uh, putting the whole thing on a commission. Right, and so if we are successful with Cal in uh, stopping the 218 process, hypothetically, and we're, we're working towards that to educate the people, it's not just us, but you listeners out there have a voice and you say yes or no. Um, what, uh, you know, what is the impact if this happens, if we are successful in stopping the Proposition 218? Well, the impact if, uh, if Proposition 218 stops the current process, it's going to ask the city to take a look at their existing plan, take a look at some of the ideas that have been proposed as far as building, and I would hope that they would at least uh, try to make a bridge to the Coastal Commission staff. They have a new Coastal Commission director now, and uh, they're there's been some new laws from the state that said they need to look at the economic impact of these changes. So I would hope that uh, when it's stopped, um, that some of the talent in the city can be used to, uh, to find an alternative uh, plan B, because it's, uh, it's imperative we do that. You can't, uh, the proposal the city sent to the federal government said that the average rate would be $247 a month. In, in, in addition to what they're existing, they're already now because um, in come August is going to be for sewer loan is going to be seventy seven dollars a month then I believe next year is going to go to eighty five and a document that I read um, dated uh, April of twenty seventeen stated that they were looking at one hundred and eighty seven after twenty nineteen and that kind of concerned me and I'm thinking all right I'm on a fixed income there's a lot of seniors out there that are on a fixed income uh, to me this is going to be an economic issue for those people that are out there, and I have a concern over that as, as a citizen. And, and that's an excellent concern. There's a lot of low-income people, and uh, I know the city said, look, we will have a way to help the low-income people get the, uh, the state approval on being a low-income person, and you'll get 10% off your bill. But if your current bill now is $92 a month, and then we're going to raise it up to $147 a month, and you get 10% off of that, it still looks to me like you're going backwards on the long way. That's only $15. So, I mean, there's a lot. Our group um, has, enough, enough, <laughs> has a lot of retired, like myself and my husband, and a lot of friends within the community that uh, are, are very concerned over this.
lives, and it frightens us. It really, really frightens us that uh, a lot of people would not be able to stay in their homes and possibly go after um, reverse mortgages, which is not the soundest, most financial, viable solution for some of these people or, or families not being able to move in here. I mean, our biggest issue that we have here on the Central Coast is affordable housing. So this, within the uh, raising of the sewer rates, is going to make rental property go up as well. And as you know, San Luis Obispo had an increase of 32% last year. So it does concern me. And, and it, it's uh, so there's a plan B. My, my B would be to repair the pipes. You have to cut the volume down that's going through the pipe. You need to find out the actual real value. Well, so so. Um, made a big air engineering error. That plant was designed for a million gallons a day. And somebody made a big error because the volume going through the plant was a half a million gallons a day. So the plant in Los Osos does not work well. Uh, they have to keep running things through it over and over and it's wasteful. Now, if we found the plant that has been proposed from all day, it's also a million gallons a day. Well, that's a, the wrong size, but they refute the fact the only way we're going to find out is we've got to fix the leaks it's allowing the product to come in, the effluent to come in, the leakage to come in, and to stop pages. The other issue that's a major problem is the, the pipeline that runs down the Embarcadero. You, you think about that pipeline, everything on the south end of town flows into that one main pipeline that runs down the Embarcadero to the pump station there. Now, think about this when the tide goes out, that pipe's above the water line. If there are any cracks in that Embarcadero pipe, Hmm, I'm not sure where it goes, but the eelgrass doesn't look very healthy down there. So I think there's there's a lot of issues that need to be directed, and the city has not had the time or the money or the interest to repair the pipes, and that is absolutely what should be done with the last rate increase. Repair the pipes, stop the infiltration and the exfiltration, which is uh, the new report on the beaches in, uh, in, in San Luis County. It was a report for one of the Morro Bay uh, beaches. Right, uh, of the beachcomber and uh, near you, yes, in that uh, area there. You had mentioned that during our meeting. Off the of beachcomber and Java, and there's a, a very nice a green ditch running out to the ocean there. There's a nice green pond, and it hasn't rained for a long time. So different, isn't it? And so my point is uh, that when they did the smoke test of the beachcomber mainline, there was smoke coming up out of the ground all the way down the street. So we know that line's leaking, and... Uh, it needs to be part of the capital improvement plan. That's what we should focus on. As soon as we stop the 218, let's repair the pipes. Let's get it done and find out where we are. And then we'll decide where to go. Now, tertiary water, that's part of the, the plant. In other words, recycled water so we can use it again. And, and uh, But if we only produce recycled water and then we pour it back into the injection wells and then the possibility of flooding, have we, have we, uh, has the city thought about that? I mean, I I have concerns. I can just see some of the shumash bones coming up through the through the ground. One of the biggest they've done a couple of studies. There's been no uh, final study on talking about putting the water after you get the clean water. The sand plant the city has is to run a pipeline from the South Bay Boulevard site down to the area around the miners' uh, hardware store and to put the water in the ground there. But it's it's uh, if you put water in the ground. Different kind of soils have different kind of ability to absorb it. And there really isn't a, a an aquifer or like a, an underground teacup. In some areas, like under Orange County, there's a big underground teacup. And when the rain goes down there, then you just stick your straw down there and you pump it out and it's good water. But that valley out in Morro Valley is, is, uh, is, is clay, and I don't know about you, but when I put the garden hose in my backyard, it runs off so fast because the soil just will not absorb it. And that's the issue you've got. So that there really hasn't been a good planning study. So if you make clean water, there's no place to put it, you're going to spend a lot of money making it, and then you have to put it back out in the ocean because there's no place to store it or, or the ground will hold it. Oh my gosh, this has, sounds like scrambled eggs to me. I, 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 my husband wrote an article and talked about that uh, under there is called a river that they had discovered, and uh, the river doesn't hold the water, it just goes out into the, into the ocean. So Anyway, um, we, we are running out of time here. I, uh, I, I just want to say, Barry, thank you for being here. Um, and if you want further information, please send your questions to citizensforaffordableliving at gmail.com. 
Um, that kind of wraps up this session. Let's check.